Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Wynn. I'm the founder of Wynn Park Supply. We are America's first specialty Vietnamese coffee company importing through direct trade relationships and roasting right here in Brooklyn, New York. Today's session is called Brew for Drew. <laughs> so thank you to Drew Barrymore and the whole team for sharing their platform with me. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a traditional Vietnamese coffee using the traditional bean filter, which is a slow drip method. It looks like this. I like to think of the bean filter as if a V60 pour over and a French press had a baby. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is, this is called a filter plate. It has tiny little holes on the bottom. And you're gonna put it right on top of your cup. Today we're going to be blending our Loyalty Blend. It's our best seller and it's a super smooth blend of both Arabica and Robusta beans from Vietnam. You want to put the brewing chamber. It also has tiny little holes in the bottom. You put the brewing chamber right on top and this is a four ounce bean filter. So a standard ratio with the bean filter is one to two. So with the four ounce, we're going to use two tablespoons of ground coffee. I couldn't find my tablespoon, so I'm just using a fuzz spoon or a noodle spoon or a soup spoon. Okay, that's about two tablespoons. It doesn't have to be exact. You can always adjust it if you want it stronger or less strong. And then you want to shake the coffee grind so that it's nice and even on top. You want it to be even so that, so that the water equally distributes. If it's too slopey, then all the water is going to fall to one side. All right, and then this is the gravity press. It has tiny little holes on the bottom and it goes right on top of the coffee. Over here, we have hot water boiling to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. You wanna add a little bit of hot water so that it covers the gravity press by about a half of an inch. Just covered it a little bit and then we're gonna wait 60 seconds and let the coffee bloom. The bloom is when coffee is degassing because during the roasting process, a lot of gases get built up and then over time, the oxygen makes the coffee degas. So now you can see that we're already starting to drip. So after about 60 seconds, you add water all the way to the top. Amazing. Then, this is the cap. Put the cap right on top. So remember, since this is a one to two ratio of coffee to water, it's gonna be a pretty strong concentrated brew. Oftentimes we describe it as a Vietnamese espresso, right? So one tablespoon of coffee is about seven grams of coffee. And then in a double shot of espresso, you're gonna get between 17 to 20 grams of coffee. So right now we have two tablespoons, which is 14 grams of coffee. So just a little bit of a, a reference for how much caffeine we're gonna get. All right, so you can check on your fiend filter. You see we're still going. Now I'm gonna share a few brew tips, right? If you find that your coffee isn't dripping, you know, um, at a steady pace, let's say it takes too long to drip, maybe 10 whole minutes, you wanna make your coffee grind a little bit more coarse, right? If you find that your coffee is dripping too fast, like it's done in two or three minutes, then you want to make your coffee grind a little bit more fine. What you want to aim for with the four ounce bean filter is the first drop before two minutes and then the last drop around five to six minutes, right? Within those time metrics, you're going to get a pretty solid brew. If it's too fast, then your coffee grinds are too coarse. If it's too slow, then your grinds are too fine. So just play with the grind setting until you get the right brew. Sometimes with fresh coffee, what we have are opposite forces happening. We have the degassing going up and the gravity and the pressure coming down. So sometimes that can create a bit of a suction inside. So what you can do is take the end of a spoon and just lift the gravity press, release some of that pressure. All right. It's gonna continue brewing. Another thing you can do, which I like to do is, I'll take the gravity press out I'll give it a little stir. Sometimes the coffee grinds can get stuck, right? Just give it a little stir, move it around. Help the flow go. Put the gravity press back inside and the cap on top. As the coffee is dripping, I'll tell you a little bit about our brand. So 
What makes us unique is that we import and roast exclusively specialty Vietnamese coffee beans. And what makes Vietnamese coffee really special is that um, Vietnam is most known for the robusta bean. Robusta beans are very different from Arabica beans. Robusta beans have two times more caffeine content, more antioxidants, 6% less fats and sugars than Arabica beans. So what you end up with is a really bold, nutty, strong um, coffee profile, um, of course with more caffeine as well. So if that's your style, definitely check us out. Also, Vietnam, did you know, is the number two producer of coffee in the world. And many people, including myself, did not know this and I was shocked. I was like, why don't I know this? I myself am a first generation Vietnamese American, but I never knew that Vietnam was such a major player in the coffee scene. And it's because of lack of transparency and lack of visibility and representation. So I really want to change that by bringing Vietnamese coffee um, to the forefront. All right, so we're almost done. The next thing I'm gonna grab is my sweet condensed milk. So Vietnamese coffee in Vietnam is traditionally enjoyed with sweet condensed milk. A lot of it has to do with the lack of electricity and refrigeration um, you know, over many, many decades. But really Vietnamese coffee in terms of the beans themselves can be enjoyed in any style you want. You can have it with milk and sugar, cream and sugar, oat milk, almond milk, anything, right? Today we're gonna have it with a little bit of sweet and condensed milk, all right? And we are also gonna have it with some ice. Okay, so I have my ice ready, They're right here. Now, once your coffee is done dripping, the cap becomes a coaster. So you just flip it, and then you wanna hold the filter plate so that you don't burn yourself, all right? Just be careful. Bring it over here. If you like it really strong, you can keep the concentration as is. If you like it a little bit lighter, feel free to do a second pour of hot water right on top so that it's kind of like an Americano, right? You add a little bit of hot water. Right now, I'm gonna add a little bit of sweetened condensed milk. Not too much though, because I really don't wanna overpower the coffee and I don't want it too sweet. I just want it just a little bit to complement the coffee. So as you can see, it's not that much, right? It's just a little bit of sweetened condensed milk because I don't wanna overpower the coffee, I wanna complement it. Stir it up. Let's see what color we get. So not too sweet. Beautiful. And I'm actually gonna add a dash of milk because there are really no rules and there's no right or wrong for how you wanna enjoy your coffee. I'm gonna add a dash of milk. See, now it's this beautiful brown color, which is just how I like it. And then the final touch is gonna be my ice cube. Whoa, here we go, look at that. Beautiful circular ice cube, all right? Now pop it in, careful not to spill coffee yourself. Woo, wow. That is beautiful. <laughs> all right, let's take a sip. Mmm, it's so perfect. It's super smooth, velvety, not too sweet, nutty, dark chocolatey, hints of cherries, but not too fruity. This is our loyalty blend. It's definitely a crowd pleaser. Mm. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to my Brew for Drew. Cheers. <laughs>